Hi, this is one of the High Priests of Conchi Ray from Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. We're proud members of the collective, and you're listening to one of the collective members, the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Wayne's World, the Deadpool podcast, episode 52, you know what that means. Instead of, uh, that's what she said jokes, or your yo mama jokes, we're going to try to squeeze in some DC jokes. No, okay, whatever. Why'd you uh, say that name? <laughs> ding! <laughs> I am Phil. Watch that name. See, that's what and I am Phil, and joining me as always is. Hey, y'all, it's Lilith. Feeling a little bit better. I hope you feel better after all this time. No, honestly, you recorded this last episode of this one back to back. So I said it like some chimichangas and tequila to make you feel better. Detroit specials. Uh, but no, I said we weren't going to do any uh, Yo Mama jokes, but I heard a new one today. Really? Yeah. They're still making them? Okay. Well, it, it, it has to do with current events. It's it's uh, Yo Mama's so big, Thanos had to snap twice. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's messed up, bro. I know. Stay off Tumblr, Philip. <laughs> no, somebody put, I, I don't know if they took a snapshot off Tumblr or something, but no, somebody posted that. I'm sure it was like Facebook or Twitter or something or. Sounds like a Facebook repost special. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny though. I'm gonna get a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> so we should sell on our website. <laughs> another day, another issue by the lovely Gail Simone. That's um, right. This one is called Healing Factor Part One. I forget. Yeah, no, I don't I, I that's what that's the title. I forget. Lil didn't forget. It's I forget. <laughs> This, I love this cover, by the way. I am actually a fan of Rhino. Maybe not this particular Rhino, but I do like Rhino. I don't want to say what it looks like, but... I like that cover. It's kind of simple and... It's cool, yeah. No background, just the two characters and the logo and stuff. No bait and switch. What did you eat, bro? <laughs> chimichangas will do it to you, bro. I eat chimichangas and crap Deadpool. Wasn't expecting to like this issue. Um, but I, I actually ended up liking it. Um, I want to say that I'm thankful for Gil Simone. For a while, the humor had been gone. And when they did have humor, it was kind of like nonsensical. And it like her humor is like strung together. And it, mm-hmm. you know, she does like the callbacks and stuff. So she kind of brought that back. And I thought that, that was pretty neat. Yeah, I, it's like sometimes people either like don't get the humor or it's weird or it gets like way dark. I mean, it could have been dark with this whole black swan racing his mind thing. But I mean, yeah, the humor's here and it's good. Yeah, and it, it had been sorely missed. So that that's definitely a big plus for this issue. Um, it, it is a weird issue, though. And I think Gail Simone like thrives in the weird. Mm hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I mean, I lo- I remember reading this. And I was like, oh, I love this. You know, and this needs to go it's on. It's kind of like while. I like horror. I don't really like body horror necessarily, but this is what kind of like the vibe that it gave me was like some body horror vibes, and because it's Deadpool, he can regenerate. He'll be all right <laughs> eventually. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's one of the better door doorknobs we we've read. <laughs> If you didn't read the issue, you wouldn't get that inside joke. Shame on you. Go read this issue. Matter of fact, go buy two. <laughs> Wait that's a minute. Right. I don't think that's how comic book royalties work. Never mind. That's not how this works. It's not how any of this works. We need that as like a drop, by the way. <laughs> yes, we did. Oh, to find that. <laughs> that could be on so many of our shows. So many. Um, but this, like I said, I, I I mean, like, who who actually wants to deal with Rhino? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And she made it work. It was just so weird. It was just such, like a weird choice for Deadpool and Rhino. Like, it's just, like the last thing I would have expected. I mean, it's better than uh, Damon Wayne's and that other guy on Lethal Weapon. 
Now you're going to leave Sean Segel, Scott Michael alone or whatever the hell. No, 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 no. Like Alaska, the first guy oh. that Damon and Wayne was fighting with. Oh, but I've got nothing against Stifler. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to leave <laughs> Stifler alone. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it was an odd choice, but it worked. And, um, and the whole reason he goes after Rhino is weird too. Cause it's like the old guy hires him to, uh, I don't know if he thinks like there's like Viagra stored in Rhino's horn. He's like, get me Rhino's horn. Was he Asian? Because that's an Asian thing. I don't think. Uh, there's just an old guy who thought the horn bring him vitality for uh, to play with his young wife. Sexy fun time strikes again. Yes. Cleavage. But cleavage too. Mm. And chainsaws can't have fun without chainsaws. Well, I mean, I like Scarface, so it's one of my favorite scenes in Scarface. This is yes, you're learning way too much about me. But I have the original issue. This is weird because I don't think they do this anymore. There's an ad in this issue, this Marvel Comics Deadpool for Batman the Animated Series DVDs. Yeah, no, no way in hell they do that anymore. No, I mean, I mean, I think if either company paid the other one enough, although they do that on TV, because what was it? Was it the season finale of The Flash? I was thinking, I think we got like Ant Man and Wasp commercials, yeah. And it's really funny because I know that like none of the um, like Arrow didn't get a Justice League thing, but Ages, I think I feel like Ages of Shield got. <laughs> like one one time and I was just like I'm so confused <laughs> well another weird thing like I saw like an actual TV ad for Dark Knight uh, uh, Metal Metal Dark Knight Metal I was just like why are we advertising for comic book arcs I'm so confused now oh I, maybe it was for Rebirth I remember I saw like an ad for like DC Comics like, like on TV <laughs> like the middle of the day well, I'm the- just like I forget what movie we were at, but it was at a movie. What? Well, it feels like, was it for a DC movie? I forget. It was either, it might have been, uh, maybe, was it? Because that Justice makes League? more sense than just randomly on like some, cha- it was like the Lifetime channel I saw this on. I'm just like, um, I think y'all just wasted y'all's money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not the demographic you Well, want. I guess they figure we got the fanboys. Let's get the fanboys' moms in here. It was just random. Like, this is what it's come to. Like, like, Comic books don't need advertising. They just need good storytelling. <laughs> what did you see who's starting to sell comics now? Uh, I saw an article today. GameStop, I guess, uh, at least in some, like in select uh, locations, are going to start selling oh, comics. The one by my um, house in Florida actually has been doing that for a while. Oh, really? I don't know if it was a test market or something. Yeah, I don't know. I think they said it's still limited, but they might be rolling it out to a couple more. But you figure, I mean, GameStop, I think. I mean, can we put them back in 7-Eleven, please? Like, exactly. I mean, get them. You want the kids. You want to hook the kids, guys. Uh, you got to put it next to the sugary sweets, not the Funko Pops. No offense, how, Funko Pops. That's how I started. I mean, spinner racks in the grocery store, convenience stores. We even had like, you know, newsstands around here. Who wants to go to Barnes and Nobles? Like, no offense. Like, I do not like going into book like the corporate bookstores anymore it just makes me feel dirty and if i look at like the magazine like rack at like barnes and noble like the if they have actual comic book issues it seems like they're like at least a couple months old i mean if i go for the barnes and noble it's for graphic novel yeah just makes me feel dirty like i should be at a comic book store i should not be in here <laughs> anyway um I, I don't know, like, I don't know why this issue worked. Like, everything, like, if you explain this to somebody, you would, they would automatically think that this wouldn't be a necessarily a good issue because mm-hmm. it's so odd. All the, all the parts are so odd. It seems like they were, like, doing the um, South Park method of how they think Family Guy episodes are made. <laughs> but somehow here it works. And I, I just really dig it that she just thinks outside of the box and she makes it work. And if you want a current uh, current reference, uh, there is a Ant Man reference in here, sort of, kind of. <laughs> Pin particles. <sighs> 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 
Oh, good lord, this issue is old. It's not that old. They have an ad for TV Guide. TV Guide's still a thing, Philip. Where? At least for Comic Con issues. Yeah, true. <laughs> That's the only time I pick up TV Guide anymore. Or the fall special. They still do those. Yeah, but you said, I mean, if I look at looking for that, it seems like I had to hunt them down. <laughs> they used to be front and center on like, like the grocery store and. Well, the fall special is always up there with National Enquirer. And the Comic-Con special, you actually have to order because they sell out of the stores really quick. Weekly World News, bad boy. Never heard of bad boy? We had an economics teacher in, like, high school who, like, once a week read us, like, Weekly World News. Oh. Half boy, half bat. You never heard of bad boy? No. So like the Chupacabra son or um I'm trying to remember. I don't know if they knew his origins. <laughs> it's all it's all like celebrity divorces now and you know Trump's deals with the aliens and stuff. I think I Project Blue Beam. <laughs> don't ever forget that I am a sometimes conspiracy theorist and I will just blurt stuff out like that occasionally. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Uh, anyway um what'd you think of rhino like were you surprised uh she chose him as a- um I, I i was a little surprised but it's like okay maybe she wanted like this unstoppable force but then you know once he hit rhino with the pin particles it's like okay this is where we're going with this joke okay <laughs> exactly yeah took a wind up but she knocked it out yes <laughs> Um, <laughs> the art continues to be really crisp and and pops. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, I was gonna say it's. The, I think it should be the end. I believe it is the same team as last issue. You, you never know, especially around that time in comic books. You could just. Sure. I mean, one did that last the Deadpool number one have like three artists, like in the same book. <laughs> oh, you mean the one we're about to review? As the backup story. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So I mean, like honestly, stuff like that happened all the time in the early 2000s. So it wouldn't oh, surprise yeah. me. So, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same team. Yep. Yeah, I would give this one a solid uh, A minus. Um. Yeah, I I would probably go straight A. I don't I don't know if it's the fill in or the doorknobs or the uh, young wife and her nice guns. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was an enjoyable story. Um, I, I don't know why we're leaning on the healing factor like thing so much, though. Like, I, I mean, it's just his mind. and You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, it's like the whole thing with his mind. It's like, well, I guess it was like a telepathic thing, kind of almost. But it's like, you know, that healing factor is like super powerful when they want it to be another time. It's just like. Convenient plot point is convenient. I mean, it's a virus, and I'm like, oh god, is it a techno organic virus? While we're at it, <laughs> somebody call cable. <laughs> like, honest to god, that's why I felt like I was just like, um, should we call cable? Do we need to call him? Call the cable man. <laughs> All right, so should we, like we said, should we get to uh, our backup issue, which is uh, a brand new issue just came out. Deadpool number one. Another one, yes. <laughs> so it made its way to three hundred this time before it got renumbered. Well, that was the original. That was the Marvel Legacy numbering. So they like added in like all the previous series. So yeah, all the other previous series up to this point made it, it added up to three hundred. I think they even counted those first two mini series. But yeah, really, yeah. Well, they were really stretching for that three hundred, huh? <laughs> Yeah. So uh um this one is definitely aimed for people who enjoyed the movies. Yes, yes. And uh like And Jer- they are out of shame about this. And I mean they they really reset after three hundred because Jerry Dugan that was his last issue, so like Deadpool basically mind wiped himself so he doesn't remember like this stuff he's done for the last couple of years. So he's they kind of sent him back to classic mercenary and 
My favorite thing is Negasonic Teenage Warhead or whatever. They're like, he, she's his secretary now. Why? Because it's a retcon. That's why. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'm just going to roll with it. That's fine. Just because you lampshade it doesn't mean you're clever. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. We've had this conversation before. I know. Well, I think that. Uh, I no, I mean, I don't mind it, but I just thought that it was really funny. It's like, why? Because we retconned it. That's why. <laughs> you know what book this is. Deal with it. <laughs> Breaking the wall. Yeah. But no, I thought, like, I, I don't blame them. Deadpool was a surprise hit. Number The first movie was a surprise hit. Number two did really, really well. But at the same time, you didn't really see a lot of people clamoring to necessarily read a Deadpool book just because they saw the movie, unlike the Avengers. You know, mm-hmm. you can take those movies as its own universe and not worry. But this comic book is like, hey, if you like this movie, these are for you. Ah! Like, no, no bones about it. But oh man, they really want movies in this. I mean, we got Negasonic Teenage Warhead. We got cameos by Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers. Yeah, he's dealing with his own celestial. See, that's the thing too. It's like this book can do everything the movies can't at this moment because he can't really interact with the Marvel Universe at large in the movies. But in the book, he can. So I think that that is another draw too as well. And it's ironic that we did did this for issue for episode 52 because is that... Is that that new character, Ro- Roval Czar or whatever? Is that Ghost Rider's cousin? <laughs> He's got so many now. I know. Oh, did you did you see Co- what in the Thanos book? There's that cosmic uh, Ghost Rider now. I mean, like, no offense. Like, come on, stop trying to make Ghost Rider happen. Like, <laughs> well, I I guess I think it's for I think it's set in the future or something because you know who the cosmic Ghost Rider is. Who? Oh, you don't know? No. Oh, you. Oh, this is complete fan pandering. The Cosmic Ghost Rider, who I believe is from the future, is Frank Castle. Shut your freaking mouth. No. That is a classic fan pander right there, bro. Wow. And I still won't read it. <laughs> I know. I haven't, I haven't read it, but yeah, it's Frank Castle. Spoilers, Phillips. Yeah. A spoiler. I heard this on the multiple podcast, so I don't know how much. Okay, like, it, it's out because I think he's even getting his own. I don't know if it's a mini series. Oh god, Marvel is just like losing its mind with these damn mini series. <laughs> it's like I want DC to do that. I don't need you to do that, Marvel. You need to focus on your ongoing stories and stop making <laughs> fifteen different type, uh, fifteen characters of the same damn person. Like, come on. Give me back to my classic Iron Man so he's not boring. And give me my damn Fantastic Four. That's all they need to do for me and I'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And make uh, Renew Your Vows canon. Yes. (laughs) Then I'll be happy. (laughs) Yes. Bring that marriage back. Almost like Bendis was writing the book. (laughs) Shut your mouth. <laughs> anyway, um, no, I I thought that number one was great, and I would recommend this to people who definitely like the movie, who were kind of hesitant to get into a Deadpool comic book because they for fear of being lost or whatever. Yeah, Although with Deadpool, you can really jump in. Yeah, but I mean, this really is a, ju- or a good jumping on point if you're looking for a, a, a place to jump on the Deadpool. If you're not, yeah, weren't reading before, because like I said, he literally mind wiped himself. He doesn't remember to like the last cut, you know, anything he's done in the last couple of years. So it's really a fresh start. Like we said, you get so many movie characters in this. You're not going to be completely lost. Yeah, it, it's fun. And if they keep the artwork uh, looking as good as it is, I can see myself reading this for a good 20 issues. And what did you think about the uh, backup story? Uh, him doing the different origins and that was like, um, yes. And then I got, and now I guess he's like created evil Batman. He killed his parents, apparently. <laughs> he killed somebody's parents, yeah. 
I was just like, he just can't, they just can't leave poor DC alone. Like, way to, way to kick a baby when it's down and take the candy out of its hand. I'm surprised, like, when, you know, he's standing in the alley over the kid. He's not, you know, the kid doesn't say something. He doesn't say, why'd you say that name? Is your name Martha? <laughs> was that Martha? He did, didn't that kid kind of look like baby David Mazus just a little bit? Oh, um, one a Gotham that might be intentional too. Yeah. Oh, definitely intentional. But I was just like, oh my god, they really went there. Oh my lordy, they should have made the parents look like Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Lauren Cohan. <laughs> they should have, but they probably would have got sued. <laughs> I hear DC's in a um a fickle mood. <laughs> oh, but I would be too. <laughs> But speaking of Jeffrey Dean Morgan, do you see what Deadpool had hanging on his wall at the end of that first story? Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Gotta get me one of those. Oh, Lord. (laughs) I thought you weren't into the TV show that much. I'm not. I just want the, I just want to, I just want the the, that with the uh, barbed wire. Actually, you know what, though? What's funny is that um, I actually do have one, but it's a T Wolf reference. Hmm. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's like the whole story. The, you know, the Celestials coming to Earth, and there's only one weapon that could stop it. Star Lord's like the good news. It's on Earth. The bad news is who has it. <laughs> Star Lord. <laughs> they ruined him. <laughs> like they made him a moron. Everybody's a moron in the MCU. <laughs> nah. With the exception of Pim, okay? Everybody else is an idiot. <laughs> anyway, no, I think I said it's a solid um B plus for me. Like I yeah. like, I mean, I like my movie. You know how I feel about like my chocolate and my peanut butter. Like there's a movie universe for a reason, and I like my comics to kind of maybe be a little bit different. But like I said, the quality seems like it could stay pretty consistent for a while, and until it drops off, I'll be reading it. Cool. Yeah, um, like I said, I've been reading, so yeah, I'll be uh, going on for a while. Are we? They're not gonna do like a million different Deadpool miniseries again, are they? I don't know. Well, oh, you know what else? Is if they're making it the movie, basically the movie continuity, you know what I mean? Then yeah, I don't know. Um, well, you know, Deadpool, they they do fifty different versions anyway, but um. Oh, I think is that next week? Um, I know Domino comes out, so we'll probably you know we're reviewing that right along with yeah. our classic Elsa moment. But you know what else is coming out? I think it's next week. Let me check. Is um Deadpool the Deadpool Assassin miniseries? Ugh. See, this is what I mean. I um, just knew. I just knew they had something else up their sleeve. Yeah, Deadpool Assassin number one comes out. Uh, can we just get the Mercs for money back? Like. <laughs> I don't know. I really wasn't too thrilled with Mercs for money. <laughs> Boy, they really milk in that X first next week. Deadpool Assassin, Domino number three, Hunt for Wolverine, Adamantium Agenda number that two. No one cares about. <gasps> <gasps> you said your mouth. <laughs> well, it's like the, the, they the, have like four different books looking for damn Wolverine. Well, yeah, and Wolverine's not like in any of them. Well, they're playing it like. Wolverine might be crazy in one book, but I don't. I don't think it's him. But uh, no, like the the one the one book the um like the Weapon Lost book is like a Daredevil and Misty Knight book. The Adamantium Agenda is like the Avengers team Wolverine was on. It's like Iron Man, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Spider Man. Sounds interesting, but you just know it's boring as crap. Yeah, the Matapore one is like the female X Men, and then what's the other one? I think it's like a Weapon X one. I'm not even picking that one up. Yeah, I. But they did announce, yeah, what is it, August or September? Wolverine, or you knew Wolverine was getting his own series back, the, the original Wolverine. Who is that even anymore? I what? literally have no idea who original Wolverine is. It's original Wolverine, not AARP Wolverine. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, no, no, they, they brought him back. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's been skulking around the Marvel Universe with an. Well, he had an Infinity Stone, then he left it for Black Widow. Oh, no, you didn't see? They said, yeah, it's August or September. There's a new Wolverine. You know, I don't care about I Marvel, know. especially but, not Wolverine. But they said he's coming back in his own ongoing series, and he's going to have a new power. Did they say what it was? 
he has. What is it? When he pops the claws, he can heat them up. Ooh, he can make s'mores and sausage links. Good for him. <laughs> Chef Logan. Jeez. I. Anyway. Chef Logan. There might be some things wrong with the Marvel uh, comic book universe right now, but Deadpool number one is not one of them. So should we get out of here on that note? Yes. On uh, that note. All right, everyone. Uh, send us your thoughts. Uh, point Gail Simone our way and please ask her to uh, talk to us. You want to talk about her old stuff, the new stuff? Red Sonia. Yeah. Black Canary. <gasps> That's the same thing. We'll talk some deep birds of prey. Just Black Canary. I don't care about the other two. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's at Will Fellfire. Uh, anyway, if you want to get a hold of us, uh, email us wadesworldpod at gmail.com, facebook.com slash wadesworldpodcast, at wadesworldpod and at CL Sidekicks on Twitter and both of those on Instagram also. Not Pinstagram, Instagram. Remember. Watch, somebody's going to take Pinstagram before I get a chance to go over there. <laughs> well, well if, it, if anyone wants to back your uh, Pinstagram project, where can I get a hold of you? Um, if you nerds want to uh, hang out with me on the on the Twitters, you can at, at, Lil, at me at Lil Hellfire. Um, if you like paleo or keto diets then yeah we can talk about that we can talk about supergirl um if you're in the smallville or and or superman you can follow me on facebook pinterest instagram and twitter at save me podcast and our website launches june 18th so look forward to that yay superman and swearing what could be better yeah, because those always get along <laughs> together. Well, but if they, they're bendis, it, it does. That's Ooh. right. <laughs> and if you want to get a hold of me, uh, interviews, um, 30 jokes, uh, email me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. And for another week, this has been Wave World, the Deadpool podcast. Wave World. Wave World. Wave World. Wave World. Episode 52. I have been Bethany Snow. And I have been Brother Blood. <laughs> the ambush bug. <laughs> That's Charlie. Oh, he wishes. You need your job. Anyway, Lilith is feeling better. She was. She's feeling safe, but she sounds a little better. Lilith, I buried the cure for uh, common cold somewhere in that room. <laughs> No, it's just chloroseptic spray and night full. I'm I'm a mess. Tequila has cured all her ills.